sometimes the smallest details can have the biggest impact on a production, and that can be both good and bad. Now, this isn't a specific tip or trick or anything like that. It's just something to think about and keep in mind when you're planning production actually out there shooting and in post-production when you're maybe editing and looking at what to keep and what to cut. Essentially what I mean is that everything in the image lends to the story, whether it's intentional or not. So for example, if you have palm trees in your frame, that says something about the location, about where you're at. If there's a brick building that gives a certain feel and emotion to the frame. If there's water, you know, what kind of water is it? Is it a lake? Is it an ocean? Is it a puddle? There's so many different things. What color is the wall? Is it a blue wall? Is it a pink wall? What does that say about what's happening? What kind of room is it? Is it a hotel room? Is it a master bedroom? Is it a little kid's bedroom? There's so many different things. And oftentimes this comes down to the locations, but it could also be other things like wardrobe or makeup or um, type of shot that you're getting. There's all these little details that can either amplify or take away from the production as a whole. And that's really important, especially when you're shooting with a budget, because you have to make a certain sacrifices. So you have to know what to sacrifice and what is uh, necessary to keep. So you really should make a list of what you absolutely have to have in order to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, this happened recently on a shoot where we were looking at, okay, we want this to be about the kids and the focus is on the kids and its families and it's heartwarming, etc. And we were looking for homes that, you know, felt like that, that felt family friendly. So we were looking for stuff with like white picket fences and front porches and backyards with swing sets and stuff that felt kid friendly, like childhood and made when just seeing it made you feel a sense of like family and love and all that good stuff. Now, there's a bunch of different homes that you can look at when you're renting a location. It could be a mansion. It could be really Southwest. It could be really beachy. It could be um, really kind of old and uh, rustic or an a bunch of antiques. You know, there's all this different stuff. So someone who's looking at it, you say, hey, we need a home to do this shoot with these families that person might not always be looking at all of those things that you need to make the audience feel the way you want them to feel. So just keep that in mind because it's almost like you have to spell it out sometimes for some people because you can say, hey, I need a house, but what specifically about the house do you need? What specifically about the wardrobe do you need? What specifically about the actors do you need? Do you need them to be you know, diverse in ethnicity? Do you need them to be male or female, tall or short, skinny or fat or whatever it is? There's a lot of different stuff. And with actors, it's really obvious, but also with like camera movement, what kind of camera movement do you need? Do you need a slider? Do you need a gimbal? Do you need a jib? Do you need a drone? Do you need it to be locked? Locked down? Do you need it to be handheld? How do you want someone to feel when they're watching it? Because something that's locked down has a very different feel than something that's handheld or something that's on a slide or something that's on a gimbal or jib or drone, etc, etc, etc. So really keep that in mind because the moment you start making sacrifices and saying, okay, well, we don't have budget for that house. Um, because I, I need this specific gear. So we need to get that house. And maybe it doesn't have all the things on your checklist. Maybe it has enough, but maybe it doesn't. You could have the best gear in the world, and if that house doesn't meet those requirements, the whole production could fall apart. And so it's constantly this balancing act of figuring out what of those small details do you absolutely need to have and what ones can you let go. Because nine times out of ten, it's not going to be ideal, but you have to be smart enough to decide what's important and what's not. Oftentimes the gear is what's not important. As much as I hate to say it because I love the gear and I love, you know, really expensive, great cameras that shoot all the dynamic range, that's not always possible when you're trying to factor in all these other things like talent, like wardrobe, like craft services, like locations, like days of filming, right? There's all that stuff that goes into it and the gear is just one component. What size crew do you need? You know, what types of crew people do you need? Um, even, even within that, you know, those kinds of people, okay, what specific personality traits do we need to have? Are there going to be kids on set? Do we need someone who's really good with kids? Do we need us uh, like a nanny who's going to be there to watch them? Do we need, it could be anything. Again, I'm just trying to like think up all the crazy different scenarios and 
every shoot is going to be different. Every project is different. So there's no way I could tell you, oh, if you just do this, then it'll be perfect because I don't know your project and you're not going to know all mine. And that's okay because everyone is unique and it's up to us to make it the best it can possibly be. So track all those little details, write them down if you have to. And oftentimes it's hard to verbalize sometimes you have to like, cause you see it in your head, right? Hopefully if you're doing this kind of work, you're a visual person, but other times people can't always see it in their head. So maybe it's something you need to sketch or look up reference images and say, look, okay, see this because there's that swing set there that makes you feel a certain way, right? You understand that it's about uh, childhood. And so we need something like that. Or maybe it's, oh, we, we want it to feel uh, really clinical and dry. So we need something that's just like stark and white and gray and there's not very much color. And you show an image and say, look at this image, see how you feel that's what we need to do. And there's reasons that you feel that way. So it's really looking at that stuff critically and not just saying, oh, we need a, a stark room. You know, oh, we need, we need a, something that represents childhood. It's like, okay, what about it makes you feel that way? And then storyboarding it out, finding those inspirational images, writing it down, and then making sure that every step along the way, you're constantly reinforcing those things and pushing towards that because that's going to make the best product in the end. And yes, you're going to have to make sacrifices. Things are going to happen. But if you can keep fighting for those things and you know you know which battles to fight and which ones just to give up because sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose. But if you know what those things are and you can, you can hold yourself accountable and hold other people accountable to those things, go in with a plan, go with an agenda then you can actually make the thing that you're trying to make and it doesn't become one of those projects where by the end of it you're just like yeah this is a good idea but it just it, it all went uh, wrong along the way i mean you how many horror stories do you hear about that where there's some specific vision that someone has for something but then because of budget because of time because of whatever all those things that cut along the way and then the end product is garbage even though it was a good idea to begin with so just keep that in mind. It's all those little things, the small things that can make the greatest impact for good or for bad.